It's my pleasure to introduce Michael Young, an electric vehicle professional. Michael has owned a electric vehicle for 10 years. He has put over 100,000 miles of electric vehicle miles on the vehicles that he has owned in his time. Mike has had a lifetime obsession with the latest technology and electric vehicles nicknamed EVs. We're the next step in this process. He has attended many local and national conferences on EV, consistently follows the latest EV news from podcasts, YouTube channels, forums, and blogs. He believes this is the way of the future, and nearly every existing automobile company is either already selling EVs or will be in the next few years. This will truly be a paradigm shift in the transportation industry. He has been involved with local community technology groups over 35 years. He works as a cybersecurity manager for the U.S. Army. Michael will be talking about the state of Telsa electric vehicles are one of the hottest technology sectors in the past few years. Companies like Telsa, Neo, and Revan are leading the charge in this space. In addition to many of the traditional automotive manufacturers, are selling or soon will be selling these vehicles. This presentation will provide a summary of the latest information about the technology of the various electric vehicles that are on the market and in what will be coming along in the future. I now turn things over to Michael. Hello, everybody. Hope everyone's having a good day. Okay, so, I mean, I, I, I say it's the uh, state of, of Tesla electric vehicles, but this goes for like a lot of different, a lot of electric vehicles out there. Um, they're coming, they're they're either online or coming down the pike. So this is going to apply kind of uh, you know, not just, it, it'll be more than just Tesla vehicles. If that if, if you have questions about other types of electric vehicles, um, quick history of Tesla. Um, founded in, in 2003, Elon Musk became CEO in 2004. Produced the first electric car in the, the Roadster in 2008. Produced the first production electric sedan, the Model S, in 2012. Uh, their Model X was in 2016. Their Model 3 was in 2017. And their Model Y, that's their latest. I didn't add it to the slide. Um, that was produced in, that was first uh, released in 2020. And here's the lineup. So in the in the near future, we have um, there's a, a lot of other you know they're they're continue to, to innovate, continue to push out uh, new vehicles. The uh, the semi truck that's going to have a five you know with a 500 uh, mile range, uh, be able to, to uh, carry 80,000 pounds. Um, the uh, Roadster two, which will be the fastest production car ever, with it with over 600 miles of range. The Cybertruck will have over 500 miles of range, be able to tow uh, up to 14,000 pounds, and it's bulletproof. And finally, in 2023, the uh, Model 2, which is, and, and that the Model 2, that's not the official name. That's kind of what everybody calls it right now. Um, it'll have, it'll probably have about a 300 mile range, and the cost will be $25,000. That'll probably be a game changer. That'll go to is a lot more people will probably be buying those vehicles. Uh, here's just some some pictures of uh, upper left there. That's the, uh, the the new Roadster. The one in the middle there is the Cybertruck, and finally the bottom. Uh, that's that's uh, some renders of what maybe what the uh, Model Two will look like. So, what makes Tesla unique from from other car? Companies. Um, I guess the, the first thing is that they're committed, they, they produce only um, electric cars. They, they don't have, uh, there's, there's no uh, internal combustion engine cars. Um, these are not compliance cars. Uh, some, some manufacturers in the past, uh, they've produced a, a small number of, of cars so that they can uh, get their, your, their rated, uh, their rated uh, the pollution standards down. Uh, they don't produce slow cars. Uh, even their slowest car, that's the uh, probably the, the, the Model Y uh, long range, 
that still has a zero to 60 time of uh, under five seconds. So these aren't slow. Um, these are also, they also produce the safest cars ever made. These cars, um, they, we, you'll see a chart in a second. They're so much, they're so much safer than any other cars that, that have been made up to this point. Also, there's the supercharger network, and I'll go into that um, where where that that is uh, you know, charging you know, charging stations through, uh, throughout the world, and there's so many of them over the competition. Um, this is also in disrupting the, the auto industry. Um, until Tesla really came along, uh, car manufacturers they talked about electric cars, but they really um, uh, they they really they they really didn't you know, pay much mind um, until until Tesla came along with, and it's totally changing their their thoughts. Um, the other big thing is they have over the air updates. Your car gets better over time. So when a new um, uh, when something new with an, an update for the car comes out, it just it downloads just like a new update to your phone, to your computer, or anything else. Um, it just it it improves. Um, also the uh, autonomous driving. Uh, there's a, a semi-autonomous right now, and that, that's just going to imp improve over time. Finally, the last but far most important is that they're fun. They're fun to drive. They, they have they have in, they have inbuilt you know built-in entertainment, uh, built-in um, you know movies, different different a, a theater mode. I'll show you, show you these things in just a moment. But they're but it's a fun vehicle. As I mentioned, they are the safest cars. Um, Without going into all the all these details, uh, they are th that is, that is their number that their number one goal: build the safest car and then take it from there. As you can see from this chart, um, the, sa the, the, the 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 three phase safest and they 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 just recently updated uh, that you can put the Model Y on here. Also, it's also one of the safest. These are the safest cars that have ever been manufactured. The supercharger. So, when you want to to charge your car and you're away from the house and you're away from your house, you go to a, a Tesla supercharger. This is the fastest charging out there by any other by any company that is commercial commercially viable. It charges quickly. Um, you're you also um, you, you it it gets done. It, there a lot of times they're in locations that that are um, that there's things to do while it's charging. If not, or, if, or if you can just watch uh, entertainment right on your screen. You can also charge at home. This is where, you know, assuming you have a, a um, you know, somewhere that you can charge, you know, and it depends on your, 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 your home situation. You can, um, you can charge um, right from your house. Um, what I do most, most days um, in the evening, I plug it, when I'm home for the evening, I plug it in. When I go back out, have a full charge ready to go in the morning. No more. I, I know a lot of times with uh, internal combustion engines, people, you know, how many times have you said, oh, I got to get to work. Crap, I got to stop for, for gas, you know, <laughs> so, and, you, and you, have, you have that situation. Uh, when you charge at home, you never have to, you never have to worry about that. And as you can see on the picture on the right, there's many different types of chargers out there. Here's the supercharger network from, from Tesla. All the every red dot on here represents um, um, a, a charging station. So they're literally all over North America. Uh, you can also also this map. Um, you know, new charging charging stations are literally added all the time. There's a there's websites that track them. Also, when you're in when you're driving in your car. Um, if you're going to, and you need, you know, you're going to need to stop at a charging station when you're getting close to your destination. Put in, the, you know, select the charging station from the map, and it takes you right there. Um, also, you know, there's other, you know, third-party companies such as Electrify America. Um, this is just my area in, in the Mid-Atlantic. Um, so they are adding charging stations, maybe not as quickly as Tesla, but as you can see, this is. There are other companies that are, that are adding this, um, so they're they're coming along. They may not be may not be as, as quite as plentiful as Tesla, but they but it's um, you, you don't have to depend on Tesla. And a lot of times you have destination chargers when you go to a location. Um, 
you can, yeah, you know, a lot of people say it, at malls and shopping centers, though, though there's a, they'll see uh, car chargers there. Um, software updates. Um, the, the Tesla char the, the Tesla cars, they regularly receive over the air, over the air software updates. This can be um, sometimes bug fixes, sometimes um, you know, map updates, uh, new applications, improved applications, any any number of things. All you have to do is be simple, simply con you know, connected to Wi-Fi and um, the, it downloads and, and installs in your car again. Very similar to your phone, to your, your, your computer, uh, really any, any type of device that, that uh, that, that gets you gets up that, that that is updated. Autonomous driving. Um, so we so with Tesla, the the autonomous driving. I mean, there, there's probably a lot. There's a lot of stuff you may have heard in the news, but it's not quite there yet. And it's and it's not. It's not. I'll admit it's not quite there. Um, but it's getting there. Probably they're probably farther along um, than any other. Um, any auto manufacturer out there as far as autonomous driving. Um, probably within the next year, they'll be at the level four, uh, you know, full self-driving. And that will that will really uh, that will really make a difference in, in improving safety on the roads. And fun. Here's just a, a few quick screenshots I took. Um, so you can see on the, in the upper left hand on the upper left, those are some games you can play in the car. Um, you know, same thing with the ones right underneath them. More, there's a lot of different games. Uh, the, you know, these aren't uh, these aren't games that are you're going to sit there for for you know four hours and play. <laughs> but uh, they they are uh, they're they're there, um, and you know they're they're fun. It, it's you're you're not just sit there you know monotonously just you know, droning on. Um, and also on the right is the Tesla Theater. Um, and this is expand again, with, as, as new software updates come out, there's, they're, they're adding more uh, services here. But the, just as an example there, there's, you know, Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, and Twitch, um, in addition to Tesla tutorials, if you, need, if you had questions about the vehicle itself. So when I talk about, so when I talk about the fully autonomous driving, uh, so right now we're kind of at a level three, where the 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 driver still has to um, you know pay attention to pay attention to the um, the road or anything that that might have come out of the ordinary, but the car generally does does all the driving, um, and that's and it, and it works. Um, I I've been using um they're full self driving since i since i got the be since i got my model 3 in 2018 and i've taken some long trips on it and it, it's much more relaxing than have to having to to watch every little second of the you know you know be con be concerned about about everything that's out there um you're you're actually able to relax a little bit and there are many other vehicles that are out there and also that are coming down the line, um, you know, from, like I said, from the, almost all the major manufacturers, um, except Toyota, <laughs> um, they're, that are releasing electric vehicles. Um, Ford, they have, they have their Mach-E, that's their Mustang Mach-E, and they're, gonna, they're, they're having their uh, electric uh, F-150 Lightning, that, that's going to be coming out uh, probably next year. Um, Nissan, they have a, a few different cars. Um, also, also um, um, you know, Honda's. I think they're they're coming out with a couple a couple of cars. Volkswagen, they also have their ID four that's that's out, and they have more, more vehicles coming down the line. And if you noticed, um, if you see read the news, you'll see all of these uh, manufacturers, all, all the auto manufacturers, they. Um, they all say that yes, they're going to be have an all electric offering if it's maybe 2025, 20, 2030, something at, at some point in the future. They, it kind of varies by manufacturer. So they, um, so all these manufacturers, it's coming, and th this is the wave of the future. Um, internal combustion engines, it's going to go really like the way of the horse. 
Um, yes, there's still there's still horses out there, and, and some of them are very beautiful horses. Um, but the you can see that they're they're going to be going to be going away probably in the next ten to fifteen years. Um, here again, here's some of the the uh, the EVs that are that are you know that are that are be, will be coming out uh, 2021. Um, this, this is pretty much this is a, a large this is a, a few of them. Um, you know, the, the Rivian pickup truck that's that's going to be coming out that's that's the pickup truck that's in the middle here. Um, there, there's again mo Model Y. There's and and there's a there's a few other the the, mo the, the Ford Mach-E that sort of thing. So the, these vehicles they're 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 coming down the line. They're 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 coming out. They're they are out. Um, and these are just you want to think of these. These are your um, kind of traditional looking vehicles. And here's some here's some popular ones. The, there's the, the Volkswagen. Uh, also Porsche, they have they have their electric vehicle, um, and also I mentioned the the, the Rivian and and, and uh, Ford. For things in the, in the near future, when I say near future, probably uh, between now and twenty twenty five at latest. Um, upper left hand corner here, you have that's the Aptera. That's a, a three wheeled wheeled vehicle that'll get a thousand miles uh, per charge. Um, Granted, it's only two seats, but a lot of people, that's, for a lot of people, that's all they usually, it's usually one or two people. Uh, bottom left is the, um, the Hummer uh, EV uh, from GM. That, that's, going to be, that's going to be coming out. Uh, they say uh, probably uh, 2022, 2023, that time frame. And finally, on the right, you won't be able to miss it. And it's not like anything you've ever seen before. The uh, that that's the uh, uh, Tesla Cybertruck. So, when, when the Thomas vehicles actually get to a point where they're at that level five, you, you saw you saw the list of the various levels of autonomy. Um, when we actually get to level five, where a driver is not it's not as needed. Um, where the drive when the vehicle can literally drive itself, um, you'll be able to take your car. You add it to the Tesla network. This is just like an Uber or Lyft driver, where people where you call it up with your phone app, say, "Hey, I want to be picked up here." The car will come to you, pick you pick you up, take you where you need to go, and that's that's all your interaction will be with the car. Um, that's that's going to you know this is going to happen uh, again probably in the next five years. They, they Tesla has some more has a little opt more a little more optimistic maybe than, than I am, but I'm 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 going to say in the next five years. Um, but the other thing is if you have this, um, you got to realize most people eighty five percent of the time your car is parked. Uh, maybe it's parked at work, or parked at home, where, wherever it may be, but. Um, it's sitting there, but if you if you're have it financed, you're still paying for it 100 percent of the time. So, um, if this this is a way that that it starts working for you, um, there, you know, the vehicle has, you know it's earning its keep finally. Um, the other thing is you you may you know you may not want you know people may not want uh, own cars. Um, like hey, all I do is I go shopping and I go to work. And I don't, you know, not, not, not that concerned about anything else. Well, then just use a, you know, use a Tesla, use a Tesla, use an autonomous vehicle, and they'll take you there. As I said, this is the, the cyber truck. This is like, this is something you, you've never seen, probably you've never seen before, nothing like it. Um, but it's, it's a work truck. Um, you're going to, you're, you're going to see this. Uh, you know, this is in the wild. This is uh, this is at a construction site. But if you're more of a city person, here's the cyber truck in uh, in New York City. So you can it it, it does. But I think it looks at home in, in both locations. So uh, that's all. That's all my main presentation. I'm sure there's one or two questions. So uh, John, if you want to go ahead and open up the floor to questions, I'm happy to take them. 
and I have a good list of them here, and there are more coming in. Um, the first big question with all these different manufacturers making different EVs, uh, do you think that the automakers are going to become cooperative and have standard size batteries and charging ports? Okay, so they, the, 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 this, this charging port will be, will be standardized. Um, that's, that's almost, it's kind of that way right now. It's what the, the, the standard is, um, it's called CCS. Um, but that is, it, it, that's, that's like standard on a lot of the newer vehicles, except for Tesla. Tesla has their own port. They made the port when there was no standard. Uh, they, you you got to read when I, when I showed you the dates that, that they started manufacturing cars, um, they had to make their own port because there was no standard. Uh, there's also what's called a J1722 um, a, adapter that that's usually for lower speed charging. Um, so that's yeah, that's what they're um, that that's an, another another standard. Um, and as far as manufacturers getting together, well, when was the last time you saw Ford and Chevy work to work on something together? I mean, that's, <laughs> that's kind of, that's going to be a challenge. So I, I don't think that there's going to be um, a real standard, uh, standard as far as the, the batteries go. Um, one thing I should mention about the batteries, and this might be another question, that's really the biggest constraint of why there aren't more um, electric vehicles today is because of the batteries and trying to manufacture the batteries it's a re is a real challenge. So that's that's going to be that's going to be the that's the biggest challenge. Um, hopefully, you know, more companies will be investing in, in making new batteries, um, and hopefully that that problem will be solved in the next couple of years. Well, here's another interesting idea. Uh, if you're on a long trip traveling, yep. and you're you need to get to point B, and mm -hmm. your charge comes down and you don't want to take the time to do another charge, do you ever think that there will be a kind of a thing where we could have a membership with our company so that as we get low, we can just drive into a store and trade the battery and then move on without having to wait for uh, uh, you know, the charge time? So, so the idea of a battery swap, um, the company, the, the uh, Chinese company, uh, NIO, they actually do that in China right now. The, the problem with that is this. Um, I, as I mentioned, the biggest problem that people, is the, the company that people, the companies have is, is acquiring the batteries. So if you're doing a battery swap, half or more of your batteries are not in vehicles, but they're sitting there waiting to be swapped out. Um, and that's that's one of the biggest that's going to be one of the biggest issues until until we have a plentiful supply of batteries. Um, I mean, you know, it, it, it's it would have, like right now Tesla sells all the vehicles that they that they make and they can't make any more because they don't have the batteries. That's and they're they're doing their best to make to get to buy every battery out there that they can in the, their form factor. But it's still a challenge. Um, so, so doing a battery swap, um, it, I mean, it's possible. I mean, Tesla actually, um, they kind of ran it, and then they kind of then when you when you look into it, they're like, hey, you're actually just batteries will be will be sitting there doing nothing for a long for a long period of time. Um, as far as the, the the time it takes to charge a battery, by the time if you're on a trip. Uh, when you stop, plug in, you go in, you, you go in, you use the, the restroom, you get yourself something to eat, you stretch your legs a little bit. By the time the, this is, you're talking 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. By the time you do that, if, if anybody, now for some of us who are, we're, you know, a little bit older, um, we don't have quite the bladder that, that goes uh, for these super, super long trips. So it doesn't, uh, for, for saying that you, you don't have that extra, 30 minutes, it's not really going to affect your, your trip that much. 
uh, how much current does a charger use? Is it pretty much the same as a stove or a dryer? Yes. For 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 a home for for a home uh, um, charger, I mean, in, in my house when when I had them install, it, I they installed a forty amp circuit. Um, they have some higher um, current chargers of sixty amps, and any any you know competent electri electrician has no problem um, installing that into into your home. Um, and now the question is, well, how much does it use? Um, I kind of think of it this way. Think of it as like doing a load of, of laundry, um, you know, for the whole, the whole time from the washing to the drying, everything. And that's about how much it, it takes to charge your vehicle. What's going to be the useful life of the battery pack? For Tesla, a million miles. Okay. Now, when, when you, that runs out of its use of recharging, what are we doing with those? Okay, so there are, there are car, there are companies coming online right now. For example, a company out of that that was actually founded by a former uh, engineer with Tesla. They're called Redwood. They are a um, battery recycling company where they're going to take these batteries, not just from from Tesla cars, but from any um, lithium lithium ion you know ba type batteries, even the ones out of your phone. They will they will harvest the materials out of them. Um, and recycle those, those materials. Okay. As a curious thing for those of us who don't know anything about the EVs, what's kind of a cost of a, of a new battery if you have to buy a new one? Okay, so the cost of the battery, that, that's really the most expensive part of the car. You're not going to be, you're probably not go going to be replacing the battery unless you're like a crazy drive, unless you're putting you know, 100,000 miles a year on your car, something crazy like that. Um, but the cost, I, it kind of, that's a, that's a hard figure. Some people say it's 10 to, 10 to 12,000. But again, these batteries are built for a million miles. So maybe after you own your car 10, 15 years, you may think about uh, changing out the battery, but it's, it's a long term, and I mean, most people get sick of their cars after you know four or five years anyway. So they're probably going to <laughs> probably going to put it on the used market at that point. Did you notice a big um, increase on your electric bill when you start going with the electric vehicles? No, not really. Like like I said, it's about the same as um, as doing a load of laundry. And personally, I don't live that far from from my my work. Um, so it's, it was, the, the impact was minimal. Okay. Uh, another thing. So when you're traveling and mm -hmm. you have to stop off and you're not at home to charge, what yep. kind of a cost do you have when you go to one of these service ch uh, stations with uh, charging? So typically when I, when I stop at a, a supercharger, uh, when I'm low and that's 10% or less of battery left, um, you don't really want to let, let it get below that anyway. Um, you don't want to let it go to zero. <laughs> you'll, you'll start getting anxiety. So, and that's that's the beauty of the software in, in a Tesla. Um, they will um, tell you to get to a supercharger when, and, and they'll calculate out you know how soon you, you need to get to a supercharger and tell you which one to go to. But the um, but the the cost of it is like ten or eleven dollars. It's about a quarter of the price of a tank of gas. Okay. Um, we had a comment that said the GM just suspended manufacturing because of chip shortages again. Well, okay, GM's got a lot of other problems, but <laughs> I, I, it's the the chip shortage is um, that's that's starting to let up, and and you're going to see that. Um, so, what, like the latest thing in the news about about GM is their Chevy Bolt, where they recalled. All of the, their Chevy Bolt vehicles. Um, the thing is, what what Chevy did and a lot of these other manufacturers, it's not that they they think, oh well, we can just grab a, one of our other cars, throw some batteries in it, and we're good to go. It's not that simple, and that's what they're finding. So what they have to do is um, they they have to they have to 
put a lot more research into it. Yeah, they, they've been making internal combustion engines for the past, you know, 120 years. So now they have they have to change their they, they have to change the way, the way they're they're making these these uh, vehicles. So this is going to be a paradigm shift for them. And they what the, the what's different about what Tesla's done that's different from these other manufacturers. Tesla is completely vertically integrated. And what that means is the people who are making the Tesla software, they work for Tesla. The people who are assembling the vehicles, um, all parts of the vehicles, they're, they, they work for Tesla. They're not, they, they, don't, they, don't, um, they don't farm out the work um, as opposed to like when you, like the, the, the batteries that were made by, that, that GM's got the problem, they were made by LG Chem. And they were imported from from Korea, and that's where they've got they've got their problem. Um, now the thing is, I know LG. They're probably going to say, "No, we told you know we we told them the way to make it, and maybe um, GM didn't listen to them. So we'll just have to see, we'll have to see what, what comes out about that." In in your readings and stuff, are they looking at trying to develop batteries that uh, have a higher charge density? For faster charging and less fire prone, and, and okay, so making it smaller. There, there are a lot less fire prone. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's start with that. You got to realize an internal combustion engine says it right there in the name that they make fires. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, as batteries, yes, they, they are. There are some fire. Pro they, they have been fire problems in the past. These 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 issues are being are being corrected. And you're going to, this is, you know, this is like a, probably going to be a one-time story. In 2025, we're going to be looking back on this and saying, oh, remember when that happened? So that's, uh, <laughs> that, you know, I, I don't think that this is going to be a, a long, a long-term story. Okay. Uh, interesting idea about uh, putting your car to use and sharing it with us or with others. Yep. Now, when, when I go somewhere and I rent a car from a, national dealer. Um, I expect that it's going to be a full tank and it's going to be serviced on a regular basis, cleaned on a regular basis. So if if we share these cars, how do we know that they're going to be safe to drive and that, that, that they're going to be cleaned out? Gonna be, as, as far as the safety of the vehicle, um, that's pretty easy to tell. Just, you know, you, you, somebody can monitor that from the, the, the app. As far as the cleanliness it's like with any, if you've ever rented, if you've ever taken an Uber that what, and, the, and it wasn't so clean, um, that person, a lot of times that person will get a, a poor rating and they won't be around long until they, they improve their, again, it's, it kind of comes down to customer service. It's mm -hmm. going to be up to the individual owner to keep their, their, their vehicle clean and they're going to be, and they're, they're going to have, as far as the, the charging, We'll probably get to the point, like I said, within the next five years, that the car will go and charge itself as, as needed to make the trips. I guess the concern can be in the cleanliness with with viruses and stuff. Yeah, the car could look clean, but it could be full of germs. So, yeah, and that's one of the things you, you know. That, that's almost like with any time you you do a rental. Like for example, right now I'm on vacation. So I'm in. A, I'm sitting in a in a, my hotel room, and I mean it looks pretty clean and everything, and I don't have any issues. But I also don't have a black. You know, I, I didn't do the black light test, if you know what I mean. Yes. Yeah. So, uh -huh. um, you know, yes, that that is a possibility. Um, but uh, that's kind of like the that that could happen really anywhere that you that you do a, a rental on any on anything. Um, Airbnb, same kind of thing. Okay. Now, being kind of realistic with yeah. the, pri the prices of the EVs, you know, how long is it going to take before the more average person is going to be able to afford it? It's kind of hard for some of us to afford new cars now that yeah. are regular ones. You know, is, is there going to be a time when it's going to be more affordable? Do you think the technology can really bring it down in price soon? Yeah. Yes. That's one of the things, um, as I mentioned, that, um, Tesla is they're, they're working on their model two, which will probably be out in the you know 2023 or so. And that'll be a, that's a $25,000 car. 
Um, and again, you've got a, the, the average selling price of a, of, a, of a new car today is over forty thousand dollars. So that when you when you introduce a twenty five thousand dollar car to the market, that'll have a significant impact. Uh, the other thing is Teslas aren't people. You know, people think, oh, they're crazy expensive. They're not as crazy expensive. If, if you go to the tesla.com and you, you do the configurator um, and configure a vehicle for yourself, you can see that these, um, you, if you can get a, if you want to get a, a baseline uh, Tesla uh, standard range model three, uh, that's going to be, that, that's you know, less than $40,000 vehicle right there. Okay. Not as not as bad as I was thinking. Uh, now here's a very good question. We get all of these electric vehicle cars out there and everything. Uh, is our electric grid going to be able to support all of these? We have enough time, you know, problem of keeping up houses and and stuff. Adding all these cars that want to be plugged in and charged. Can the grid take care of it? Yes, it will, um, because two things are two things are kind of happening um, together in that the while the electric vehicles are coming online, the other thing is that more and more houses and more and more locations are, are um, having solar panels and all, or I should say renewables. So we're actually at there's there's more electricity being added to the grid in, a, in more of a, a local you know, in, a, in a local set you know keeping the, the keeping the, the power more local as opposed to um a power plant that's so far away on the grid um when you when you have to when you go across the grid as people may know um you're because of the resistance resistance of the 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 um the power cables you actually you you lose power if you have more um homes and more businesses and that sort of thing that are uh, generating power they will that power uh, will will be used locally, and so you won't have so you won't have to be uh, using a, so so efficient, so inefficient I should say, um, as you know having a, a a power plant that's located a, a long distance away. So as more homes and more businesses they they switch to renewables, and they're bringing them them locally. Um, this is going to as also assist with the. Um, you're putting more, having more vehicle, more vehicles that that are electric to be able to to be able to um, take advantage of that electric to, that uh, power that's generated. We have a um, an attendee who said that they're on a waiting list for a cyber truck for a number yep. of years, and has been researching while he's been waiting and found out that this vehicle is going to be three feet longer than his Toyota Highlander. It isn't going to fit in his garage. So okay. he's going to have to now wire a charger outside the house. And how how safe is that going to be for somebody else when you're gone during the day, come over and use your charger to charge up their car? Well, it, it's it's one of those. Yes, that could happen. Um, but somebody else, but somebody could also come over and use the water from an outside uh, faucet on your house. Um, a lot of people have also an electrical outlet. They could go plug into an electrical outlet. Uh, could it, could these things happen? Yeah. Um, you know, it's not a perfect world. It, but the thing is, this is, it's a lot easy. It, it, it kind of the question is, why would you want to, you know, pull up and sit, sit in front of somebody's house without their permission? How about they, have, how about they come home at lunchtime? Well, now there's now there's a problem with trespassing, yeah. Um, and also, most a lot of people have uh, like the ring doorbells, you know, with security cameras. Um, so, I, yeah, I I don't think that's going to be a, a significant issue of, of people coming over to to use your charger. Yeah. Um, your yeah. your okay your your list of of upcoming vehicles yeah. didn't seem to include very many SUVs. There, uh, the thing is, what's coming out is are, are things like, the, the, you know, they're, they're doing what's called the crossover size. Um, the uh, Rivian, they have a they have a, uh, a SUV coming out the the R the R1S, and which is stands for SUV. <laughs> 
um, the as opposed to their R1T, which is their you know Rivian One truck. Um, they have they, there there are a few, and they're. It, it depends on the size, you know, what size of SUV you're talking about. If you're, if they, they want the crossover size SUV, then there, there are a few coming, you know, there are a few coming out. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that, that's, it's, it's going to depend on what's, what size vehicle you're, you're, you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, range for an electric car. So, Teslas typically have a range of over 300 miles. It kind of it kind of depends on which model you get. Um, the the shortest range that you can buy in the United States uh, that is that's their standard range plus, which has a, a range of about 260 miles. Um, then you can go all the way up to the the um, Model S Plaid, which actually has a range of of nearly 500 miles. So it, it's it's going to depend on on how you um, you know, on, on depends on which vehicle you you purchase. Again, the, the the Tesla configurator is great for that. Also, the you know a lot of other vehicles they have you know they have various ranges too. Um, you, you almost everything is any new vehicle has a range of over two hundred miles on up. Yeah. So just like with a regular car, you've just got to, you know, plan for how far I can go before sure. I have to gas up. Yeah. Um, I think the only big difference is that that uh, gas pumps will always fill your car up the same as opposed to going to somewhere and having a charging station that's a trickle station or a supercharger. You, you know, it might not get you very far. What about. OK, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, what, what about the experience with, with repairs? People are concerned, well, how far am I going to have to go to get my uh, Tesla uh, repaired? Um, and do they repair or do they just throw in a replacement so that they can move it out and get it back again? Um, yeah, again, with any, with any vehicle, with, any, with any, uh, anything that needs to be repaired, it depends on how... Um, you know what has to what has to be repaired. Uh, some some things, uh, you know, like a body shop. They um, if there's body damage, they re re you know repair the, the the body panels that need that need to be uh, fixed. As far as like various components that need to be repaired. Um, okay, so a couple of things to, for for Tesla service. There are some there are some service centers. They're they're not they're not as plentiful as as you know your your standard uh, you know your your Traditional OEMs, but they they are they are out there, and also Tesla has mobile service, where for for things that if you're let's say um, something's acting up with one of your cameras or something, a lot of times they'll be able to come to your location and fix it at your and fix it at your location. Um, for something major, that's a that, you know that's that'll probably have to go into the service center. But okay. these uh, the the other thing is with an electric vehicle. There's a lot fewer um, things that can actually go wrong. Um, that, that's that's one thing that that's, you, you don't have to worry about. You don't have to you don't have oil changes. You don't have so you don't have to worry about the oil filter. You don't have the the, the fuel filters. Um, you you don't have um, and, and frankly, like with with the the with Teslas, they have what's called. They have a lot of regenerative braking, so you do what's called a lot of uh, one. I, I like I do one pedal driving. Um, so when I take my when I take my foot off the accelerator, it starts to it starts to slow down. It starts to to regenerate, and that doesn't use the brakes. That actually uses that the the power goes right back into the battery. So the so yes, there are there are ways. You know, there are service centers. There are things that need to be uh, repaired. But again, there's there are a lot fewer than your tra your traditional um, internal combustion engines. Okay, I'm going to do one more question, and there's a number of questions that have been posted, and we will send those uh, to Michael, and he will answer them all back. And those who are signed in with your name on our chat box will get sent all those answers. Here's the final question: 
What if I run out of power on the road? What are my options? Is AAA going to be able to come? And they're, they're actually they're actually uh, as I mentioned with with um, Tesla mobile service. They actually have they actually have a, a mobile charger that that um, can come to your location and charge and charge you up to to get you to the closest uh, supercharger. 